Good evening and welcome to the North Peoria Bible Class Hour. We are delighted again to be able to come into your homes or wherever you may be at this hour uh, for another study from the Word of God. Uh, we want you now to uh, tag someone uh, and to share this message on tonight and tell them that this is the North Peoria Bible Class Hour and that we're on. We're waiting on those who usually tune in uh, to the Bible Class Hour uh, to come on in, uh, and then we'll begin in just a little while our study from the Word of God tonight. I request just a verse of a song while we wait on those to come in. Again, tag someone uh, and share this message on tonight. Jesus, oh sweet Jesus, how I love, oh yeah, calling your name. Oh, Jesus, sweet Jesus, every day, every day, your name is the same. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus, how I love, how I love calling your name. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus, every day, every day, your name is the same. Ooh, 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 mm. Your name is the same. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, Jesus, how I love, how I love calling your name. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, sweet Jesus, every day, every day, your name is the same. Amen. Amen. In just a moment, we're going to go to God uh, in prayer before we begin our class on tonight. We're remembering especially uh, the uh, Gilkey family, Sister uh, Gilkey, and the passing of her sister, Sister Velma Johnson, who was funeralized today in Muskogee. Uh, so let's keep uh, the Gilkey family in your prayers as they have lost, Sister Gilkey has lost her sister, and others who are tied into that family and that loss. So many have lost loved ones in this uh, COVID season, this time of, of, of pandemic, uh, who have not been able to have all of their loved ones gather at the same time because of the numbers that are, uh, that are allowed. And so uh, let's keep all of those who've lost, even if someone in your family, if you've lost someone, we're going to remember you uh, tonight in our prayers uh, that God will comfort uh, you in your loss. Not only uh, Sister Gilkey, nor my Sister Norma Gilkey, but we're remembering uh, all of those of our church family in recent months and weeks who have lost loved ones, more particularly Sister uh, Helen Brewer uh, and Brother Kel Mullins, uh, some of the most recent ones who have lost loved ones. We know that prayer changes things. And if prayer does not change things, prayer will indeed change you. So let's take a moment and just go to God in prayer. Lord, thank you for being a God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for caring about us. Thank you for being there when we need you. Thank you for drying our tears when we shed them. Thank you for propping us up when we're leaning. Thank you for raising our head when it's bowed down. Thank you for being strength when we're weak. Thank you for being comfort uh, and a company keeper when we're lonely. Thank you for being a provider for us when we need. We know you're all of these things to us and more. And so we ask you now to be with those who've lost loved ones, those who are saddened because loved ones are in the hospital and they can't get to see them. We just ask that you be God, that you console, comfort, heal, touch, and what we'll do, fathers, be careful always in our lives to give you glory and to say hallelujah for those things 
that you do for us every day of our lives. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, now tag somebody and uh, reach down and hit the share button <clears throat> and share this lesson tonight as we deal with some uh, things I believe are going to be helpful to us as we deal in this time of pandemic uh, with disappointment. In just a moment, we'll be there. I'll give you two, two announcements now and save the rest of them until the end of our class on tonight. Uh, remember, uh, North Peoria, uh, that we will have someone on our parking lot on this coming Saturday between 12 and 3. Uh, Sister Henrietta Love will be there, and she will be there to uh, act as a notary. Uh, it'll be absolutely free of charge to you uh, and to provide uh, absentee ballot verification. Uh, absentee ballot verification, uh, a notary is required. She is a notary. She'll be there on the lot uh, from 12 on to 3 this coming Saturday. And if you have an absentee ballot and it needs to be verified, then come this coming Saturday between 12 and 3 on the parking lot at North Peoria, and you'll be able to have your ballot uh, verified free of charge as a service we're providing uh, from the North Peoria Church and as a service Sister Love is providing absolutely free to those of you who need it. So again, and then that will be available on this coming uh, Saturday. And then there's also a free notary service provided um, on the parking lot of Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, which is the drive through for OSU Tulsa, Lot D. The drive through for OSU Tulsa, Lot D, is right beside Mount Zion Baptist Church. And they have free notary services on that parking lot from 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. And that will be October the 17th through the 18th and October the 24th through the 25th. So from 10 until 2 on those dates, 17th through the 18th, uh, and from the 24th through the 25th of October, you can have your absentee ballots uh, verified by a notary, and that will be absolutely free. So I'll come back near the end and reemphasize the need to get out uh, and to vote. Uh, we're encouraging folks to vote uh, as if your life depended on it, because it may well be that your life or your children's life or your son's or daughter's life may depend on how you vote. So prepare, get out, uh, and vote. Now tonight, I want to deal for a few moments with the subject of dealing with disappointment. As we deal with so much currently uh, in this world, uh, every day of our lives, a disappointment is one of those things that we are continuously dealing with in life. And I want to read a text and deal with a gentleman who dealt with disappointment over and over again. But having God in your life can make the difference. If you'll turn quickly to Genesis chapter 37, uh, there is a word in Genesis 37, beginning at verse number three. That the Bible says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when he, his brethren saw that his, their father loved him more than all of his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Verse 5, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Verse 6, and he said unto them, Here, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. I want to talk about dealing with disappointment through the life of Joseph. Joseph was a person who dealt with a lot of disappointment in his life. And in dealing with a, a pandemic and dealing with all the other issues, uh, many of us right now are dealing with being disappointed at how life has turned out and how perhaps Many situations in our lives have turned out not the way we intended for them to turn out. And we can do in our own minds nothing about it. How to handle disappointment? Well, some years ago, an IQ test was developed to test the intelligent quotient of a person to see how they dealt with life and what your IQ is. And if you had a very high IQ, you were supposed to be able to deal with life differently than folks who had a low IQ. But we've determined in life that it's not necessarily how smart you are as to how resilient you can be. 
as to how you can bounce back. Oh yes, you can take an IQ test. And they may say you're smart in science. You may be smart in math. You may be smart uh, in biology. But sometimes an IQ test doesn't measure your resilience and how you can handle disappointment. And then somebody did uh, a test, test called an EQ test. It's an emotional quotient test. How emotionally stable is that person? Because if they're emotionally stable, they should be able to handle more than other folk are, than folks who are not uh, quite well emotionally. But they determine that your emotions don't altogether determine how successful you are. Well, you can be emotional and sometimes emotionally unstable and still be a high performer. But then there is someone developed an AQ test, and that is an adversity quotient. How do you handle adversity? How do you handle disappointment? How do you handle being let down? How do you handle when life comes back negative? How do you handle when folk are not all that they need to be and you're disappointed in them? Well, let's look at briefly the life of Joseph and see if we can be helped by what Joseph went through. I believe this story is here just for us to help us deal with disappointments in life. Now, number one, Joseph had family disappointed appointment. His family disappointed. Has there anybody had anyone in your family to disappoint you? Is there a child or a mom or a dad or a relative or an aunt or an uncle or a cousin that you're disappointed in? Has family let you down? Have you depended on family at some point only to see that they didn't come through for you? And to this day now, you're still feeling bad about somebody in the family? Well, take a look at Joseph. Uh, Joseph in Genesis 37, uh, he had family problems. Joseph came from a relatively dysfunctional family. Is there anybody who has some dysfunction in your family? Sometimes we don't like to admit things about our own family. We can look at someone else's and tell them all the problems that they have. But there are some dysfunctional folk in my family. I stopped by to tell you there are some folk in my family that are kin to me by blood, but they're as dysfunctional as they can be. Yes, they belong to me. I don't mind telling you that everybody in my family don't act like Christians. Everyone in my family don't talk like Christians. Everyone in my family don't treat each other family members right. There are some dysfunctional folk in the Blakeney family. Is there anybody in your family that you can be honest and say they're relatively dysfunctional? Well, look at what happened uh, with Joseph. Uh, number one, uh, Joseph's father, Jacob, had four wives, uh, and uh, Joseph's mother was Rachel, and Rachel uh, died giving birth to the youngest brother, Benjamin. And then Jacob uh, had uh, an overwhelmingly favoritism, favorite spirit toward uh, Joseph. Jacob loved Joseph more than he loved his other children. Is there somebody in this audience who feel like your mama cared more about one child than she did another? Or she cared more about someone else than she did you? Or did a mother somewhere, somewhere let you down? Did a dad somewhere let you down? And you're still bearing the marks of that inside of you today? And you haven't been able to let go? Well, uh, Joseph came from that kind of family. His daddy loved him more than he did the rest of the boys. Can you imagine? what the other 10 boys must have thought about their dad when he openly displayed that he loved one child over another, uh, when he openly said, this is my favorite child. Oh yes, there's some dysfunctionalism going on, not only in Joseph's family, there's some going on in your family today. Stop by to help you for a while. Well, not only was that true, but his half brothers hated him. His half brothers hated him. They hated him and they hated him viciously. They hated him to the point where they talked about killing him in Genesis chapter 37. That's anger. That is displaced anger. I'm mad with my daddy because he liked him better. Did anybody have any displaced anger tonight? You're mad at your brother because your mama liked him better? Well, it's not his fault. We have to understand that we sometimes have displaced anger. We're angry with things that we ought to not be angry about. We ought to be able to let it go. And so the brothers hated Joseph. Because what Jacob did was give him more than he gave the rest. Matter of fact, one of the reasons that they hated him were three reasons. Number one, 
is because Jacob made him a coat of many colors and did not make them one. And they were angry because uh, Joseph walked around parading his new coat uh, when they didn't have one. They were angry, number two, because Joseph was a tattletale in the family. He told everything on everybody. Uh, is there any one in this audience who had a relative who was a tattletale, who you got a whipping because they told it on you and told everything uh, in the family? Well, the brothers didn't like it because uh, Joseph was a tattletale. Uh, and then number three, they didn't like him because he had a dream. And he had a dream that all of them bowed down to him. Joseph didn't know when to keep his mouth shut. He didn't know when to hush. Is there anybody in your family that don't know how to hush, how to just be quiet for a moment? Uh, everything comes up, come out. Uh, well, I'm praying for them tonight and praying for you. Uh, he told them, I had a dream, guys, and I saw all of you all bowing down to me. No brother wants to be told by another brother that you're less than me and that someday you're going to bow down to me. Learn how to be quiet. Learn how to keep some stuff to yourself. Learn if God is blessing you right now. Then learn how to keep some of your blessings to yourself. Don't tell everybody because some folk don't want to see you blessed anyway. And so they had difficulty with him. So his family was dysfunctional. And we have a number of families listening tonight that are dysfunctional families. And I'll tell you how to get past that in a little while. Uh, amen. But the family was dysfunctional. He was disappointed in his family. Some of us are disappointed in our families as well. Uh, number two, Joseph's employer disappointed him. Well, what happened with the family is that they decided they wouldn't kill him in Genesis 37. Let's not kill him. At least one or two brothers objected to killing him. At least one or two folk in your family always try to do what's right. Aren't you glad that you got one or two that try and do what's right? Aren't you glad that one or two in the family always have a sense of responsibility? Aren't you glad that two or three in the family will stand together against the others who act ugly all the time? Won't you give those folks a shout and give them a hallelujah moment? For it's good to have some family folk you know got good sense uh, that you can depend on when the chips are down. So at least some brothers said, let's not kill him. Let's not do that to him. And they concocted a story and they took his nice coat that he wore. They dipped it in animal's blood and told his daddy uh, that a wild beast had killed him. But in the meantime, they had sold him to a traveling band that was headed to Egypt. They sold their brother, sold their brother because they hated him so much, sold him. Have you been, uh, something been done to you that's negative by a member of your family? Have someone hurt your feelings in your family? Uh, have somebody put you down in your family? Has someone told you in your family that you weren't going to succeed? Has somebody told you you ain't about nothing in your family and you're still again carrying it around? I stopped by to tell you, wait and watch God. Wait and watch God. Wait and watch God. God can make a lie out of every one of them. When they say you won't be nothing, just watch God and watch God make them have to bow down to you at some point in life. Ask you for a favor that they need from you. So they sold him uh, to a traveling band uh, that was going to Egypt. When they sold him into slavery, he got down to Egypt's land. And when he got down there, things started to look up for him. He was looking good for him. Amen. Uh, the second in command of part of security, or rather uh, the king's security part of her, was a security man. He was in charge of the security for uh, the king. Uh, he was a high-ranking official in the kingdom. And part of us saw him and said, look, uh, this Israelite, I've noticed that God keep on blessing him. I've noticed that God, his God, has favor on him. And if I bring him into my house, just maybe some of that favor that he has will fall on me. So he hired Joseph, brought him into his house. And Joseph was doing well in the house of Potiphar. Rose to be all over all of the affairs at Potiphar's house. Life was looking good. Life was looking better than when his brothers had sold him. He now has some good things going on in his life. Have you ever had some good things going on just to have the rug snatched out from under you? So all of a sudden, when things went well, Mrs. Potiphar put her eyes on this handsome young man, uh, the wife of the man who hired him. And she tried to seduce him, and he resisted. But she grabbed his coat. Now again, the coat is getting him in trouble. Grabbed his coat, grabbed his garment, and held on and told her husband that he had tried 
to do some ungodly things to her. And so Potiphar believed of what she said and ended up putting him back in jail. So even the employer uh, gave him headache after he'd been a good employee, after he'd worked. There's some people right now that's been good employees. They did their eight hours. They didn't go to the bathroom and stay all day. They came back and worked, gave an honest day's labor, did all that they could for the employer that they were doing. Never was late, never took time off, never misbehaved on the job. But yet, when the layoff number came up, you got the layoff number. You got the layoff memo. You got the pink slip. You're no longer employed after you've been a good employee. Now they're trying to cut your benefits. Now you don't know how you're going to make it. After having been a good employee for all of those years, I stopped by to tell you, wait on the Lord. The Lord isn't through with you yet. The Lord isn't done with you yet. The story hasn't been written yet. You're only in the first and second chapter. There's more volumes to be written. Don't get so discouraged that you give up. Don't quit. Don't get disappointed in your employer so much that you don't think another job is around the way. God has another job waiting on you. Just keep on trying. Don't give up. Uh, don't become discouraged. Keep on going. And so it was, I put him back in jail, looking bad for him again. So we're disappointed in his family. We're disappointed in his employer. And now look at this. He's disappointed in his friends. Is there somebody who's disappointed in your friends as well? Because in prison, he met a baker, uh, a man. He met a baker. And the baker was a friend of his. The baker was somebody he trusted while he was in jail. All of them were former employees. Both of them were former employees of the king. And they both had dreams. And uh, Joseph said, let me tell y'all what your dreams mean. And so uh, the chief baker, uh, a man, bless his heart, the chief baker uh, said, look here, uh, your dream, chief baker, means that you're not going to make it. You're going to be hanged uh, in just three days. And the birds are going to eat your flesh. Unfortunately, Chief Baker, you won't get back to your job. You won't actually do what you used to do. God ain't going to allow it. But he said to the cupbearer, the cupbearer for the king, he said, look here, I tell you what, you're going to make it back. You're going to be okay. The king is going to restore you. The king is going to put you back in your rightful position. You're going to get back to where you're making a good living again. You're going to get back to where you get your job back. You're going to get back to where you have some prominence and prestige again. Your jail time ain't going to last always. God's going to deliver you from jail. Just wait on the Lord. And in uh, three days, uh, the king took him back. The king took the cupbearer back. But Joseph had said to him, when you get back to your job, remember how you got back. Remember, I told you that you're going to get back. Remember, I was the one who told you that your future looks bright. Remember what I did for you while you were in jail. Don't forget about me. Don't leave me down here. Just tell a good word to the king for me. Tell the king that I'm down here. And it was two years because his friend forgot about it. Won't your friends forget about you sometimes? Won't your friends who you have done things for, your friends that you've helped, your friends you've stood by, your friends you went by when they needed you, but won't they forget about you sometimes when it comes that time to be blessed? Won't they act like they don't know you? But don't get sad. Don't get disappointed. Just wait on the Lord. I'm going to keep that theme all the way through as I close this. Just wait on the Lord. And so two years later, the king had a dream. When the king had a dream, then it came back to the cupbearer. Oh, yes, there's somebody down in jail. Oh, there's somebody down in jail that you got down that can tell you the meaning of your dream. I remember now. See, sometimes it may take folk a, a long time to remember. They may get amnesia. Uh, but again, God will put them back uh, in your mind or in, on their mind. And so he said, look, there's a guy named Joseph in jail who can tell you what the meaning of your dream happened to be, O king. I remember him. And the king sent for him. And the king sent for him and brought him out of jail. It is suggested that he spent almost 10 years in jail when he could have spent just three days because his friends forgot about him. Can't your friends disappoint you? Can't your family disappoint you? Can't your employers disappoint you? All but one thing I'll tell you is that God will never disappoint you. God will never let you down. God will always come through. God will never leave you by yourself. God will always extend his hand to you. When other folk turn away, he'll turn towards you. 
God will always lift you up. He will always see you through. God will always be there. Don't ever forget that all you need to do is stretch your hand to him and say, no other help I know. If you don't help me, where shall I go? God never forgot about him or on his own time schedule. And so the king came to get him. And he said, you saw seven lean ears of corn and seven fat ears. You saw seven fat cows and seven lean cows. Oh, king, it means it's going to be a famine for seven years. It's going to be plenty for seven years. And I suggest while you got plenty, save for when you don't have any. Uh, I will say that to many of you today. While you got plenty, save for when you don't have any. Uh, don't uh, uh, waste anything. And so the king said, okay, if that be true, if that be true, then I'm going to start saving and filling all of the feed and all of the houses in Egypt. I'm going to make and fill my barns. I'm going to make the cows fat. I'm going to make everything right so when we don't have nothing, Israel, or rather Egypt, will be okay. And so he did. And then guess what happened as I close? Guess what happened? Uh, he let Joseph uh, navigate and negotiate all of those things so that Egypt would be okay. And as time went on, time passed. It became a famine in the land where Joseph's brothers was. They got hungry. They couldn't have, uh, they didn't have any food to eat. Uh, they got hungry. Uh, they didn't know how they were going to fill their bellies. They got hungry and said, what in the world are we going to do? Watch God now. For those of you who are disappointed, those of you who are disappointed in friends and family in jail, watch God. He said, look, what we need to do is go down to Egypt. And I hear they have plenty down there. Let's move and let's go. Let's go ask them to let us come because we can't make it any longer because we don't have enough to get by. And they went on down to Egypt's land. And when they got down there, Joseph recognized his brothers, but his brothers didn't recognize him. And before it was all over, they had to bow down at the feet of Joseph, the very man that they had uh, said, let's kill. The very man that they told his daddy was dead. The very man whose coat they dripped in blood. The very man who they sold into slavery and forgot about. The very man who they hated every day of their lives. God fixed it so they had to ask him for help. God will fix it so that your friends that you're disappointed in will have to ask you for help. Now you have enough God in you when they ask to do what's right. Don't hold a grudge so long when God has blessed you uh, to hold on to it. If God has blessed you with food, bless your enemy. If God has blessed you with finance, bless others. Don't hold it in. Joseph didn't hold back the food that they needed because he had more God in him than he had devil in him. Do you have more God in you than you have devil in you? I would say to you, have some God in you tonight. Get God in you to deal with disappointment. Get God in you to deal with family. Get God in you to deal with friends. Get God in you to deal with this job situation. And watch God make a way. He made a way for Israel in the middle of the Red Sea. Caused the wind to blow all night long. He made a way for Paul when he was locked up in jail. Uh, amen. He made a way for Peter. And he made a way for his disciples so many times. When they were in a boat and didn't know how they were going to make it to the other side. He came to them walking on their problem. He walked on top of their problem. Their problem was the water. Their problem was the wind. And he spoke to their problems and said, leave my children alone. God can speak to your problem tonight. He can tell your problem behave. He can speak to the wind in your life and stop it from blowing. Try God. Trust God. And God will help you with your disappointment. He's a marvelous and a mighty God. Let's pray together. Lord. Thank you for being God. Thank you for loving us when we're unlovable. Thank you for caring about us when we don't even care about ourselves. Thank you for the life of Joseph that reminds us that we can be disappointed. But every time we're disappointed, let's look up to you and trust you because you're guiding our lives. You're directing our footsteps. And without you, we can't make it in this uncertain world. Do this for us and what we're careful to do is always sing your praise and give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember now, North Peoria, a few announcements as we close out on tonight. The communion, you can stop by and pick it up uh, on this coming Saturday uh, between 12 uh, and 3. There'll be someone there at the building uh, to assist you in picking up uh, your communion this coming Saturday from 12 on to 3. And so keep that in mind. We do have a trunk or treat planned where we're going to be decorating some cars 
uh, and kids will be able to come up on Halloween uh, and pick up candy in a safe environment. Uh, so again, we would ask you that if you have not brought, brought candy by the building, uh, stop by the building and drop off some candy for the trunk or treat for the children who will be coming by on that evening. Uh, and so let's avail ourselves of that. And if you have not uh, told Jonathan that you can decorate your car, uh, then please notify him, uh, notify the building, and let us know if you can uh, decorate your car for trunk or treat. We need 30 cars or so uh, to be decorated uh, on Halloween evening. So again, uh, keep that in mind uh, to drink, drop your candy by the building. Uh, also, we appreciate so very much for those who have been so great about leaving your offering. Uh, you have been absolutely wonderful, allowed us to do the work that needs to be done. I tell people every week, only the building is closed. The church is still open. We've never closed the church. And when folks say the churches have closed down, I don't know which church they mean because they didn't mean North Peoria. We've never closed. Uh, the building is closed, but the church is still active. We're working every day of our lives doing those things that need to be done. So keep that in mind. Also, remember the town hall meeting on this coming Sunday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, we will be discussing the church's position on Black Lives Matter and how we should or should not uh, be responding to uh, this particular organization and the movement uh, that's going on in our country, uh, and that is the Black Lives Matter. We'll, we'll do there. We'll also continue with mental health uh, during the pandemic on this coming Sunday uh, at uh, 7 o'clock, so tune in. Now, as my final words, would you again uh, tag or text somebody uh, and tell them it's on and then share? Press the share button at the bottom uh, and share this message. I believe that the world needs uh, this lesson. I believe that we're many of us disappointed with life. We're disappointed with how we are living and how things turned out for us. I believe this lesson will be helpful to many who are disappointed to learn to trust and try God. Do that for me. Push the share button. I look forward to seeing you Sunday morning uh, at 10 o'clock for our regular morning worship services and what a time we're planning on having in the Lord. Again, please stop by members if you're uh, from 10, or rather from 12 until uh, 3 and pick up the chameleon and leave your lay-by in store. God bless you, and God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Give you peace.